Hello everyone. How is everything going on? Hi ma'am. Okay. Let's carry on with the chapter. Today, we are going to learn about the structural organization of a cell. Can anyone guess what is the structural organization of a cell? Probably, cell is made up of different components like cell membrane and cytoplasm. Yes, students. For this, we can see a permanent slide of a cell. If we examine a cell under the microscope, we found that the cells have three basic cell components. That is plasma membrane, nucleus and cytoplasm. All activities inside the cell and interaction of the cell with its environment are possible due to these features. Let us see how. Plasma membrane or cell membrane. It is the outermost covering of the cell that separates the contents of the cell from its external environment. It is flexible and is made up of organic molecules called lipids and proteins. The plasma membrane allows or permits the entry and exit of some materials in and out of the cell. So they are known as selectively permeable membrane. Ma'am, I have a doubt. How does the movement of substances take place into the cell? And how do substances move out of the cell? Good question, Anu. We will learn about it with the help of few experiments. Some substances like carbon dioxide or oxygen gases can move across the cell membrane by a process called diffusion. It means there is a difference of concentration of CO2 inside and outside of a cell. CO2 moves out of the cell from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration outside the cell by the process of diffusion. So, diffusion plays an important role in gaseous exchange between the cells as well as the cell and its external environment. Water also obeys the law of diffusion. The movement of water across the plasma membrane is also affected by the amount of substance dissolved in water. Thus, osmosis is the passage of water from a region of high water concentration through a semi-permeable membrane to a region of low water concentration. In short, osmosis is the movement of water molecule through a selectively permeable membrane. What will happen if we put a cell into a solution of sugar or salt in water? Very good question, Rohit. For the better understanding of osmosis, we will learn about it with the help of experiment in the laboratory. Please follow me to the lab. So, students, we have some dried resins with us. We perform the process of osmosis. Seriously, ma'am? With resins? Yes, Richa, with resins. Because the concentration of a solute in a solution will affect the movement of water in and out of graphs. So, students, let's start with our experiment. We have different solutions as labeled on the beakers. That is plain water grab juice and concentrated sugar or salt water. Look at this. What was that? The test I performed confirms presence of osmosis. Can anyone tell me the difference? I can ma'am. Each gains water and swells when placed in plain water. However, when placed in the concentrated solution, it loses water and consequently shrinks. Correct, Richa. 
As we all know that grafts are made up of cells. The skin of the graft is also a semi-permeable membrane. As you all see the differences. Based on those differences, we can say that when the resin is placed in water, which is a hypotonic solution, water will move down the concentration gradient from high concentration to low concentration. The overall result is that water enters the cell and cell is likely to swell up. From this, we came with the concept of hypotonic solution. If the medium surrounding the cell has a higher water concentration than cell, the cell will gain water by osmosis. Such a solution is known as hypotonic solution. When the resin is placed in grape juice, which is an isotonic solution, water crosses the cell membrane in both directions. But the amount going in is the same as the amount going out. So, there is no overall movement of water and the cell will stay the same size. From this, we came with the concept of isotonic solution. If the medium has exactly the same water concentration as the cell, there will be no net movement of water across the cell membrane. Such a solution is also known as isotonic solution. When the resin is placed in concentrated sugar or salt water, a hypertonic solution, water will move down the concentration gradient from high concentration to low concentration, causing it to shrink. From this, we came with the concept of hypertonic solution. If the medium has a lower water concentration, then the cell will lose water by osmosis. Such a solution is known as hypertonic solution. So, osmosis is a special case of diffusion through a selectively permeable membrane. Yes. Anu, why is the plasma membrane called a selectively permeable membrane? Plasma membrane allow passage to some selected substances. Hence, it is called a selectively permeable or semi-permeable membrane. That's right. So, your class is over. Do come with the revision of what we have studied today. Thank you.